Good afternoon. I'd like to call the Public Safety Committee meeting of January 4th to order. Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Stephen Havey, and I am the chairman of this committee. First thing we'd like is a roll call, please. Mr. Havey. Here. Mr. Sear. Here. Mr. Barnes. Present. Mr. Demick. Here. Mr. Healy. Here. Mr. Rumfeld. Here. Mr. Stocken. Here. And Mr. Harris. Here. Seven present. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of minutes from December 7. I would like a motion on that, please. Rumfeld, I move. Thank Sear you. A second. Thank you. Uh, any corrections or comments on these minutes? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Those are approved. First up, we have Brian Perkins. I understand he's not here with us, so you will be able to review his report and feel free to reach out to him any questions that you might have. Next up, we're going to have the public defender, Mr. Carter, sir. Good morning, board. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good anytime, sir. And happy new year. Thank you. With that said, our numbers continue to remain. They keep getting arrested. Oh, Mr. Carter, sir, could you turn on your mic, please? Thank you. Testing, testing. You know? Outstanding. All right. Thank you very much. First, I want to start off. It's just been another successful year for the uh, council at first appearance. Now, when I say successful, I measure success by uh, the number of calls that we answer, show up at, and handle, right? So well, we answered over 500 calls for arraignments. Uh, we were there in many of those cases. Uh, people were able to go home that night. They may have been released to pretrial release supervision. Um, some of them, uh, of course, the justices may have wanted to put them in uh, jail, but if it was a non-qualifying offense at that time with our successful uh, advocacy, uh, they were able to go home. Of some of those cases, there was a large number within weeks or months from being released from those charges. They either got in trouble again or they didn't. Uh, by by all the terms and conditions of pretrial release and the probation department uh, discharged their duties and notified the court that the person wasn't in compliance and those individuals were then uh, placed in jail on bail. So that's how the program uh, has been running and while I consider it a success, I consider it a success that none of the public Defenders were injured and in responding to calls at 2 and 3 in the morning. Um, but it doesn't mean that uh, I support this program as it exists going forward long time term. The goal still is uh, to devise a, a program for arraignments at the jail twice a day and hopefully with the new year upon us and the newly elected sheriff, within the next few months, we can uh, sit down with some of the stakeholders and continue those discussions. Excellent. Question. And, uh, Any questions for Mr. Carter? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Carter, um, you have any um, records on uh, before the change in all the uh, legislation over the last two years and on the bail and jail and no jail and no bail um, and raise the age. Yeah, any records uh, indicating the number of people who went to jail on arraignment uh, prior to that compared to currently? Uh, I think I have enough numbers to probably put something together for you. You think it was a high percentage? I think the, that it, it, yes, it was higher. It was definitely higher. Well, I mean, higher, but I mean, a high, a high number? Or, uh, or, I, I couldn't say that without looking at the numbers. Okay. Well, if you could get something for us on that, uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Will do. Excellent. Any other questions for Mr. Carter, please? Hearing none, I thank you very much for your time. Thanks thank for coming. Thank you for your time. Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New okay. Year's. You too, man. Okay. 
Up next, Mr. Jeff Lucky, Office of Emergency Management and Fire Service. Good afternoon, sir. Happy New Year. Good afternoon. I just want to highlight a couple things. Um, EMS, um, you can see on the 14th that Bonnie went out and met with Alfred. We're still on track to have the Alfred class start up. That's through the Alfred state itself. We're just augmenting it or overseeing it somewhat, but it's going to be there. They'll register through Alfred state. They'll be paying some college fees associated with that. Um, our EMS classes that we traditionally have start next week. Uh, EMT starts next week, as, as mentioned. And um, yeah, I think Jennifer's helping us out too just now. Um, we're still on track with both. He's looking at the fall. Uh, they're in their budget process, um, you know, suggestions and stuff like that. So it's still nothing. We're not at contract phase, you know, uh, phase yet to entice them something that way. But they're they're excited about it. We're still just trying to build a program, and uh, with Jennifer's help, with the guidance, I think we'll succeed. So uh, we're still on track to have something uh, through the BOCES, whether it be the uh, um, leadership program or in BOCES itself. Just want to highlight a couple things. Obviously, the the storm, the holiday storm, or the bluff blizzard. Um, obviously, excuse me. Traditionally, it doesn't affect us much, and we really didn't get much snow effect from that. Uh, we did have power outages associated with that. And the one thing that was different about this storm um, than other past storms I've had when I've had power outages. There, you know, I've had around 18,000 out of 35 customers at one time in a March storm a couple years ago. Um, this year it was different that we, uh, the numbers still were down around 2,500. Um, and traditionally we don't get much people responding out, uh, requesting sheltering, but because of the wind, the power companies couldn't give us any idea when they could repair. Because if the, mile, if the wind is over 35 miles an hour, they can't work out of the buckets. Um, so that was one thing. And um, so that Friday afternoon, you know, we were continually updating the weather, preparing for it, looking at it that, um, that Friday afternoon. And the case gave me a call, said that people had used her code blue, and she was running out of code blue, which is a, a state program that if the temperature drops any time below 32 degrees or the wind chills below 32 degrees, people can seek shelter through uh, the county. Um, so she was utilizing that, so she was um, concerned about that. We went ahead and opened up um, two warming shelters in Sile and in uh, Fillmore. Um, I think a couple other ones opened up, that I, but we weren't officially aware of them. We didn't push them out, which I, we'll work on our fire departments again to make us back, backfill us with awareness of that. Um, and, and talking with her with that and, and the unknown, particularly, you know, I'm not particularly a, a trailer park that um, I was concerned with. Um, not having close social connections to the communities. Um, that was my biggest potential. And so talking over her, we, I said, let's open up a Red Cross shelter. Um, Red Cross is very supportive of that, but they were because of the blizzard and they had already deployed, deployed people. They were having difficulty of bringing down an, an administrator or an overseer. Um, when she first talked about it, she knew she didn't have staff to staff it. And working with that and I said, I'll bring some of my people in. Uh, to staff it overnight uh, based upon the need. And so we, we went ahead and opened it. When you open it, you have to, as you publicize it, you can't close it right away. They really like it open 24 hours. You can't pop it up for a few hours, find out nobody's there, and then close it down. Um, so the delay in us getting it up by, again, we started at 4 o'clock, by 9.30 we had it open. A um, couple hour delay was just doing the paperwork with Red Cross. Um, but they've always been very supportive. They gave me full use of their trailer. Uh, which has got the cots, blankets, and stuff like that. So they gave me full use of the trailer. Jesse Valley ended up giving us full use of their facility, uh, which is the standard uh, sheltering place for our county uh, developed through Red Cross. Um, full use of the facility, opened the kitchen up for us. Um, again, great stewards. Have, you know, same as always, I've always said every time, that we everybody comes together and helps out in times of need. Um, so that went ahead. If um, I guess that there's a I'll take a pause for a moment. There's particular questions about that, I'd like to answer some. Okay. I just want to say that uh, that storm that we had was a particularly ugly storm yeah. with the wind and the uh, wind chill and what snow that we did get. And uh, uh, thank you for your help and uh, everyone who worked with you in order to keep that under control. Any questions for Mr. Lucky? Well, I'd like to touch on one more thing, if you don't oh. mind. So that was just, You're I wanted out. to pause for that for a second. Sure. Uh, just the deployment. Again, the request went out for assistance into Erie County. Um, you can see the departments that were deployed. Um, it's listed in my report. Um, uh, they were they rolled right in. Uh, call them up on Christmas Day. Call up my DCs and on Christmas Day and and um, 
at two or four o'clock when the, I think when the first deployment came out, request from Erie County for uh, deployment across the state. Uh, two o'clock by four o'clock, I had people coming back and they were waiting to, to roll up. So they went in and assisted those departments in Erie County, um, did lots of rescues, there was a list of their stuff. To go along with that, um, the one unique one, uh, again, was on the second day, uh, Angelica was requested for track vehicles, and you've seen lots of news articles about track vehicles needed in Buffalo. Um, Angelica was assigned to Buffalo City and was assigned to EMS Task Force 2. So they went in and did EMS rescues where they couldn't get in at all. Um, the last thing about that is there is, looking like there'll be deep, you've talk, heard me talk before about declarations and declared emergencies. Uh, FEMA will be covering. They're asking for input right now. Uh, we've been, we've reached out to the highway departments. We're aware of a couple of utilities, um, service, um, sewer and water plants that might have had some damage. We need to meet our threshold, which is, oh, the new one just came out, it's $206,000 um, is what we need for us to be part of any declaration. Uh, there's gotta be 36 million in, basically in the state. Um, we have a meeting on Friday with a representative, uh, a webinar on Friday mm -hmm. for all the counties possibly affected. So we're we're trying to find, if we're close to that number, we will submit if we are. What's, go ahead, Mr. What's the window on that, Jeff? Uh, how long a time period? That's, it used to be 30 days to gather your information and turn it into state. The the last one I worked on, and it seems this was done, you have two weeks. You have 14 days to turn in the state, then the state has 14 days beyond that to turn into FEMA. So we, we're looking at, right, while you're still doing recovery, we have to contact these individuals to come up with figures. Okay, and that could always be reopened or not, or... Uh... This, this is to make sure that there's 36 million in the, the, the two things you always have to have, um, Fred's been through it a lot. Fred's been more on the money side than I have. Um, you have to have, <laughs> yeah, you've got money though. Um, you, 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 you have to present first to make, we, the state itself has to get 36 million. And then for us to be included, we have to hit that 206. So we, early in the process, we have to gather that. Um, it, it's harder to get in later. Um, we we're put us down with the, we've already made them aware that we are aware of damages. We don't know the amount. So we're, we have all of our ducks in a row. Um, if we need to execute this pending the, the state has $36 million in damage, we can submit it instantly. We're yeah. ready to go. Yes. Yeah. Go we're, we're, we're in contact with them. We know we have damages. Good. We don't, you know, Fred's been on the phone call and I've called him before and said, Fred, we need to figure out where we're at and the highway guys all get together and they come up with all these figures and we're nowhere near it. Um, we have some more, we, I know my highway departments from past experience isn't gonna get me that $200,000 for the damage because we didn't have that much damage or overtime. So we're waiting on a couple mm -hmm. uh, facilities that had damage to give us a number. If we get close to that, then we'll really push the highway guys. But we've made all the highway guys aware of it uh, <laughs> last week and this week. Um, and again today, because they've just got another thing today that they want by, Four o'clock today was at noon. They sent it to us, but um, we're, we're trying to, we've already reported some. We don't have a dollar figure, so that's what we need to start with. Uh, one other question there. You, yes. you, know, um, you mentioned working with the Red Cross. Uh, we don't have a Red Cross office in Allegheny County anymore, is that correct? That's correct. They, they closed what, a lot of the brick and mortars in about 2018. Right. What's the nearest, nearest uh, office, brick and mortar office? Jamestown and Buffalo. Long ways. Yeah, we, that's unfortunate. We we still have been fortunate that we have, based on talking to other emergency managers, fire coordinators, we still have the strongest amount of volunteers in the county. Um, the other ones, it takes two counties together to get somebody to respond to a fire. I've never had a problem with the Red Cross coming out to a fire. So we still have a strong group of supporters, but I agree, it's been more difficult without a brick and mortar here. Thank you. Okay. Jeff, um, Going back to the uh, the weekend without the electric, um, I know it was a lot more minute than what went on in Erie County, but uh, if we can get whatever documentation to the administrator, um, we're going to probably look at reviewing this and make sure our protocol yep. of what you had going was good. Anything that you thought was wrong, that didn't work well, right. Red Cross wasn't available, those types of things, so we can update that. Would be very she's already set up a, she's already set up a meeting for us to meet on that next monday good good thank you excellent other questions for mr lucky 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry to prolong. Mr. Harris. Uh, back to the EMT classes. Yes. Um, I think maybe it was the legislator Ricketts Wales mentioned that the Alfred State, uh, the planned Alfred State class is defunct. Is that right? Not that we're aware of. They haven't told us to to stop. Was that going to Was that going to happen in the spring semester? Uh, the date. It's not. It's supposed to start January twenty fourth. Is the date we have. So. Okay. So, and how how involved is your office with with standing up that course? We we're bringing in our instructor. They're paying they're paying our instructor to be there, but it'll be through us that you know they'll we'll, we'll bill them for our instructor hours. Okay. Um, so they're paying. We're bringing in our instructor who's been past instructor for years in in EMS. Um, wanted to step away a little bit, and she's eager to get right back into it again. She's been our lead instructor. Okay, cool. And they're supplying the, you know, their, their charge that they're charging is for, sil for facilities, for paying the mm -hmm. instructor. Um, <coughs> right now, I don't think there's any college credit, per se, with it, but they, they developed a fee based upon uh, what they need to recoup to host a class. Okay, and just to follow up on that, I'm glad to hear that. Um, it, the, there are, uh, I don't know if they're called ride-along requirements or whatever, but yeah. there are ambulance time requirements that are associated with the EMTB. Right. How how are the, how's Alfred State managing that? Are they doing that through Alfred? I, I, I don't think so. We, we have a list. Bonnie already has a list of agencies we work with. So it can be hospitals. It can, of course, the MTS is, is there. They can do it in their home. It's only 10 hours. So I don't, I don't foresee that, but that Alfred is an option. You know, but you have to be not just to ride along, but you have to be what they call a preceptor. So the person riding along with them has to have a an approval to be an evaluator. Okay. Okay. But, so that so yeah. there's, you don't necessarily have to have a sponsor like that's that's no. traditionally done. Okay. Thank you very much. No. Uh, you know, Jones is one of ours. Cuban Memorial is one of ours. But they with COVID, they opened it up a lot more um, because the, some of the private agencies weren't allowing strangers on board. Um, so they opened up a lot more through COVID and allowed nursing homes or you can go to doctors as long as you have patient contacts. Doesn't have to be you know, ideally it's emergency, but patient contacts and doing vitals and, and history is the most important part. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lucky? No? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Up next we have the district attorney's office. Mr. Degnan is here for us today. Welcome, sir. Once again, you know, the back have to come out and get a chance to thrive. We don't consider you that way, sir. <laughs> so I, they did submit a report. I mean, they, I guess the basic nut of it is that crime is up, happiness is down, and, and there you go, right? I mean, I, if JR was here, happiness is up for him, but not for the rest of us. So uh, There's enough business to keep you busy. Uh, yeah, I think more than enough, uh -huh. sadly. Not to continue to complain about bail reform, but it's, you know, it's just done a lot of damage, I think, you know, everywhere. I mean, you know, I do Wellsville, people steal, they get out, they steal again, and it's the escalation. Just, a, it's a problem, you know. Are there any numbers or figures on your report you'd be interested in highlighting, or are you just good letting Mostly the felonies are up. The real problem is, um, and misdemeanors are a problem that they're, but just the, the felonies are up, and the problem with the felonies, they take a, a lot, a lot of time, you know, so it puts a big strain on the, the office, and really. And that's, that's about it. Okay. Questions for Mr. Degnan? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Go yes. ahead. Uh, Mr. Um, would you say, in your opinion, that one of the reasons the felonies are up is, is like uh, you're not getting punished for the lesser crimes? That, that just encourages yeah. you to do to do well, more serious crimes? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it, what happens is, in my opinion, that, you know, people get arrested, you know, they have a drug problem, they have this problem, they have a problem, nothing happens, right, because they're out on bail, then they commit another crime, and then they get let out, and, they can, and it just escalates to the point where in the, before bail reform, you know, you'd have an intervention, you'd have a jail component, you know, as far as bail goes, right, you could, sort of stop what I consider the madness, and then that sort of, but now um, what happens is it continues to escalate, and either other people who are addicted to drugs get hurt, or violent crime occurs, or something else, so it just continues to go up and up and up and creates an issue. Our homicide rate uh, 
hasn't increased here yet, though, right? Uh, I'm sure it has statewide. Well, I, I think, you know, historically from, you know, and you know I've been around a while, um, there are more, more serious crimes, and there, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to go back through that. The homicide rate is not, probably not um, greater, but um, the serious physical, you know, serious injuries, serious physical felonies, what I would call, are up considerably. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Number three. Appreciate <laughs> you being here. <laughs> All right, next up we have the probation department. Uh, Director Scott Granite here, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy thank New you. Year. All right, I submitted the, uh, the monthly report for the November 30th through December 29th. Uh, I think you'll see a, the, the gradual increase in numbers continues across the board for the most part. Um, overall, a little bit behind where we were in 2021, but I think we've had uh, a lot of cases discharged successfully and, and different alternatives to um, closure of those cases for the final totals. And that'll be coming out in the annual report soon uh, for the board. I'd like to highlight uh, down below, we've, we've kind of drilled down a little bit more into some of these numbers. This is the second month in a row we've done a little more uh, detail on breakdown of cases and I just like to note pretrial cases are way up for active cases and I'd also like to highlight the sex offender program with the 24 for 24 for mandatory uh, quarterly home checks and address verifications and that they're doing super super work with that so good mr. Sherman mr. Healy go ahead uh, yes yeah, Scott uh, would you uh, Explain to everybody what pretrial investigations are and when they're required. Just yeah, we so. do um, investigations for anyone who is is uh, <coughs> arrested. Um, sometimes those investigations are done if they are incarcerated from the jail um, for a pretrial report. The pretrial investigation report goes to the judge, district attorney, and the public defender's office. And That's it, for all arrests? Or uh, just those where they might be sentenced to... Uh, uh, or has that changed? No, it's for, for basically all arrests. I mean, there, we, do, we, we do screen and interview as many as we can. A lot more now are coming from the bench directly, not through the jail system. So we're not doing as many investigations at that level, but we do get orders to, to um, interview. Uh, this week, I think there's been several already where our pretrial officer, senior officer has done interviews and investigations on eligibility for pretrial services. Other questions? I've got one, actually, if sure. I could. Uh, could you help explain raise the lower age uh, as opposed to the raise the age? Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, I was going to get to that later in, okay, the, that's fine. in the presentation in, here, but I can jump right to it if you. Uh, in uh, whatever order you'd like, just I didn't well, want to forget it. We will, um, on December 29th, the uh, New York State um, passed legislation which raises the lower age, which essentially takes the age of uh, uh, criminal, well, juvenile delinquency from the age of 7 to 12. Um, so no longer can they be, someone be arrested and charged with a juvenile delinquency uh, level charge in that age. There are some carve out exceptions. I think there are 11 uh, exceptions to that based on the level of the charge. I don't see this impacting Allegheny County tremendously. Um, you know, typically we're not seeing that age group historically over the years. Uh, maybe a couple a year uh, in that age group. I don't think it's going to impact us a great deal, but it is something worthwhile to discuss and be aware of. Okay, and, uh, super. I appreciate that explanation. Sure. <clears throat> A couple updates and, and a request here. Um, we've <clears throat> we have uh, just filled this week our account clerk position, and things are going smoothly. We anticipate the retirement of our senior account clerk typist at the end of this month, 
and uh, with full <coughs> board approval on that position, which we're very grateful for. We're going to start interviews soon, as soon as we get some candidates uh, to interview. I've submitted requests for um, consideration approval for probation officer trainee. We also anticipate our senior probation officer assistant to be retiring in the month of January. And in looking at the, uh, the position and where we want to be, I think, in the, in the uh, near future and for succession planning, I think I'd like to request consideration for that to become a uh, probation officer trainee position rather than a senior probation officer assistant. And I've submitted that request for the board, uh, for the committee. Okay. Ron Fellow, move that. Okay. Serial second. second. All right. Discussion on that. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to point out that yes. for our policy, this has been signed off on by uh, both the county administrator and the personnel officer. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, that delinquency was due to my, my error in the, in the form. <laughs> so, but it has caught up and it has been approved. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that is carried. Would you like to do the other one? We have uh, an MOE. Yes, uh, MOE for the acceptance of grant funds. This is our annual uh, ignition lock from New York State um, for the amount of $1,193. Congratulations. Uh, I move that. Very good. And a second? Ralph, I'll second. Thank you. I, I will note that, that that amount is much lower than previous years based on numbers, but I think we will be in a position to see that increase uh, over time in, in 2023. Okay. Uh, other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And thank you. That is carried. Anything else, sir? A couple of things. Uh, one of them is the, uh, I did include the probation organizational chart for the board's review. And just for reference, uh, we've done a lot of changes. A lot of uh, transitions have gone on this year. And um, I, I kind of need a road map. And I thought, well, we built it. We'll share it. <laughs> so for the board's uh, reference, this is where we were looking at in 23 with goals, positions that have been filled, and uh, what we hope to accomplish in 2023. The other piece is just a really a, not a formal MOE, but just uh, bringing everyone up to date on the OVW restructure plan. Um, I think we're, we're making good progress. This is one of the goals that I had hoped. I think I was a little unrealistic in my uh, <laughs> hope to have this done in 22, but um, we're, we still have good momentum in making this happen. And I just want to kind of give you an update of where we were with that process. You and had, uh, you had quite a few goals when we hired you, and it looks like you're picking them off pretty quick. Congratulations on that. Well, we've got a good team there. Yep. We've got a lot of help, a lot of help all around. It's been it's been a great experience so far. And lastly, uh, more good news. the. Uh, Alfred State Police Academy has announced their peace officer training. Um, they have set the dates for uh, May 15th through June. Uh, I think it's a five week course. This has been formalized. It's been accepted by the state of New York. And uh, we will have three um, cadets enrolled in a local peace officer training course right in Alfred State College. We're real excited about this. Did you say police or peace? Peace officer. No, 
I can I can talk louder and finish up. So. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, we're uh, we're very very excited about this. I, I think the um, the interest has turned into demand. Of hearing from other directors from uh, Western New York and other regions, I think um, many probation departments are in a hiring phase. A lot of new cadets are going to be coming through, and it's just great that we can offer this through Alfred State. So it's pretty exciting. That's excellent. Anything else for Mr. Grant here? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Gilbert Green, sir, Director of Weights and Measures. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Thank you. I don't have near as much as anybody else, so what you see is what I got. We expect good news from you, sir. No bad news. Okay, good. We'll take that. Okay. Uh, Any questions? Okay. Um, any questions for Mr. Green? You really saved us on time. Yes, absolutely. It's my um, job. Save it for the sheriff. Just out of curiosity, uh, when the new runnings opens up in Wellsville, will there be anything to check in there? Of course. Do you think? I what don't know if there's anything that affects my job, but no. I'll definitely be there. <laughs> yes, well, there will be some things to check, but I was wondering about so they, your they job. They sell bulk feed or anything. I only, I've been to one. I didn't see anything, that, at least in that one, so okay. see what they do. All right. Well, we'll find out if uh, they need the oversight. We'll do it, right? Great. And I'll let you know the next meeting. You're a good man. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. We have the office of the sheriff, uh, Mr. Scott Cicerello, our new sheriff. Welcome, sir, to your very first. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sheriff Whitney submitted his, his uh, monthly report for December. Are there any questions on his report? I'm looking. No? No. All right. Uh, I do want to point out, if you're looking at the, the numbers, especially of incarcerated individuals, you're seeing a trend upward there. If you go back to the mid-2022, uh, our daily incarcerated rate was in the 40s. Uh -huh. You can see we're running in the upper 60s and in the 70 range uh, as far as the daily count. So um, that's, a, that's a positive thing as far as we're concerned. We will have our comprehensive end of the year report done for the next meeting. Uh, it's going to take us some time to, to get through all the data. Uh, so um, I'll have that for you at the next public safety meeting. Uh, as I think Jeff pointed out, we're partnering um, with uh, County OES and Bonnie uh, as far as her in her position um, to host a paramedic course at the sheriff's office. Uh, we're looking forward to that. I think that's a great thing for the county. Um, and uh, I like the thought of us partnering with them um, to get this accomplished. So um, this is... Uh, the first time we've done this, and I'm looking forward to a long relationship with County OES for these types of trainings. Thanks. Um, as you can see, we're in a state of transition. Things are uh, a little chaotic at the moment, um, but we're getting through it. Um, I just want to say thanks to all of you guys for your help and support in getting through this process. Everybody on the Public Safety Committee, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, it's it's been difficult at times to get through some of our our things, but uh, uh, I'm finding that. Um, the support that you guys are giving me, and especially the support back here, uh, Carissa, um, Terry, Allison, Brooke, uh, everybody, Keith, um, and getting through this transition, I'm finding that if this is a team effort, it's a hell of a lot easier. And I thank you all very much. I don't have anything else. Do you have any questions for me? No, we appreciate uh, that. No, I, I've got. Uh, New Year with that. My mic doesn't work. Your so. mic doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yell. Started off the uh, New Year with a bang, so if everybody knows we've had a couple major incidents in the last four or five days. We so, have, yeah. uh, we've had two um, situations in, in consecutive nights with individuals with weapons who've threatened to harm other people um, that we've responded and assisted the New York State Police with. Yeah. Uh, both critical incidents, uh, both that have had uh, good outcomes. Yeah. So, so thanks. thanks for the under sheriff for showing up. Absolutely. <laughs> yep, that's what we do. Excellent. 
Yep. I just had a question. Uh, to what sure. do you attribute the uh, the growth in population? Well, I'm going to give Scott Grantier and his probation department a pat on the back. I believe that their strict oversight of pretrial release and violation of, of conditions of, of uh, people that are on probation is, is one part of that. The second part, I believe, is our district attorney's office is doing a great job in sentencing individuals to jail terms, um, which is a crazy thing, right? People commit crimes should be going to jail. And they are starting to. Um, and a lot of this is a process through COVID when things were kind of backed up in the system mm -hmm. and cases weren't being heard. Um, what you're seeing is the final outcome where we are getting just sentences now where people are actually going to jail. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Uh, any questions for the sheriff? This, this committee uh, wishes you and your under sheriff a great term. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support, Adam. Yeah, you definitely have our support. Thank you. Uh, all right. Nothing else? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one other item. Uh, this is listed from uh, Brenda, the clerk of the board, but I will read it. This are the appointments to the Traffic Safety Board. The Traffic Safety Board has requested the Board of Legislators to reappoint the following individuals for a three-year term on the Traffic Safety Board commencing January 1, 2023 and expiring December 31, 2025, Ray Parlett, Sean Grusendorf, Melinda Rounds, and Linda Edwards. In addition, the Traffic Safety Board has requested that the board consider appointing Sheriff Scott A. Cicerello to replace retiring Sheriff Rick Whitney for a three-year term on the Traffic Safety Board commencing January 1, 2023 and expiring December 31, 2025. And I'm looking for a motion. You'll yeah, we'll make that. Motion. Demical second. Thank you. Any discussion on this? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that is carried. Do we have any old business? New business? Anything for the good of the order? I would be pleased to entertain a motion for adjournment. Mr. Chairman, there appears to be nothing to come, no other business to come before the Public Safety Committee. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. And a second, please. Sear. Sear will second that. Thank you very much. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you all very much. Good meeting. <laughs>